In June of 2018, the French girlfriend and I took her 87-year-old mother on a trip to St. Petersburg, Russia, to fulfill her lifelong dream of visiting the Hermitage Museum. Here are the five of us in front of the Hermitage Museum. Construction began in 1752 under the orders of Empress Elizabeth, with the Hermitage Museum opening in 1764, 12 years later, under Catherine the Great, as a private gallery for the art she collected. It was open to the public in 1852. Over the years, the museum has expanded so that it now includes five connected buildings with over three million exhibits. To see all the exhibits treasured in the Hermitage is just impossible. It's been calculated that if you spend just a single minute at one item and spend eight hours in the Hermitage daily, it will take you 15 years to view all the museum's exhibits. The Hermitage is ranked as the 10th most visited museum in the world, with nearly 3 million visitors a year. For those who love archaeology, the Egyptian collection is unsurpassed, including several thousand items. The collection was established in 1852, the year the museum was made open to the public, when it purchased the collection of statuettes from Countess Alexandra Laval and added 900 items in 1862 and several thousand other items over the ensuing years. The Armorial Hall, built in 1837, displays coats of arms and heraldic emblems of all the Russian provinces attached to crystal chandeliers. The hall was intended for balls and receptions. This was one of my favorite rooms, displaying a thousand portraits of honored Russian soldiers painted throughout the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. The immensity of the hallways are awe-inspiring, including intricate faux molding, prominent statuary, and imperial furniture. Before being open to the public, the Hermitage Building served as a home and workplace for nearly a thousand people, including the Imperial family. Many events were held in these buildings, including masquerades for the nobility, grand receptions, and ceremonies for state and government officials. The Hermitage collection is huge, even from the very beginning. In her lifetime, Catherine the Great acquired 4,000 paintings from the old masters, 38,000 books, 10,000 engraved gems, 10,000 drawings, 16,000 coins and medals, and a natural history collection filling two galleries. Catherine identified herself as a patron of the arts. She created institutes of literature and culture and was active in playwriting. The representation of Catherine alongside Minerva would come to be a tradition of enlightened patronage in Russia. The collection grew from many sources over the ensuing years. After the Soviet Revolution, for example, the private collection from several palaces of the Russian czars and numerous private mansions were nationalized and redistributed among major Soviet state museums. The museum lost many of its valuable pieces during the early years of the socialist government when they were auctioned off to capitalistic countries. For example, 
In 1931, the American industrialist Andrew W. Mellon bought 21 Renaissance paintings and donated them to the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. During World War II, the Soviet Army looted a trove of French Impressionist and Post-Impressionist paintings from German collections that now form a part of the Hermitage Collection. Because we only had enough time and energy to spend four hours touring the museum, we only saw a small part of the work on display. Someday, we hope to go back to this truly outstanding museum. For those interested in a more thorough video experience, there are several outstanding videos available on YouTube. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube video channel.